marked something of a turning point for the Bills. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Now, since that Monday night, they've gone 4-1. and one. Mm. They've actually had the second-best rushing offense in the entire NFL in that span. And we've got none other than Dr. Jones Drew here to sort of break <laughs> it down, it. tell us why Devin Singletary's turning it around, and what's behind this drastic change in Buffalo's approach. And I like that they are not above making adjustments. No question. I think sometimes it's, just, it's all about saying, hey, what we're doing now is not working. Let's try something else. And when you start to try these things, it works out. Let me show you what I'm talking about uh -huh. here. Uh, you know, this a little surgery here. Look, it's simple. Cover two, two high safeties. You have right here against the Colts. This is early in the season, right? The, the Colts won this game, and this is why. As we look, there's seven guys in the box. That's a light box, because you have seven blockers, obviously, and a running back. So you run it, right? You want to run it here. Here we got play action pass. Look, you have a, guys going. You can just easily hand the ball off. You have two guys going. You could probably get 10 yards on this because the safeties are so deep. But nope, play action pass. We pull uh, the ball out, and then look. Now we're scrambling for our lives. We do a little shovel pass. Doesn't work out. I'm frustrated if I'm Josh Allen because I'm running around. I don't want to do this. It's a terrible game. Here we go again. Here against the Patriots. Wind, wind, windy, all over the place, all this. Patriots are playing two high safeties, right? And what we mean by that, look, those guys are 10 yards off the ball. There's six guys in the box with six defenders. Damn, this is amazing. Another play action fake. Now, this ball was almost completed. But why? Why make it so tough? That's my guy, Stefan Diggs, trying to go make a play on it. The wind kind of took it over his shoulder. He get, we're frustrated. Oh, I don't like this. This is not it. But how have things changed? Let me show you. But we're, we're dejected right now, but there we go. Now it's snow. This is what I want. Two high safeties again against the Falcons. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Six guys in the box. We have six defenders. This is what it comes to. This is what the Bills have been doing. You know what? Hey, let's take some pressure off Josh Allen. Let's run the ball. Nice little power play. Look at this. You got guys blocking down. Linemen stepping through holes. Hats on hats. You have your uh, tight end blocking there, the backer. But this is what is the difference. With this run, what we haven't seen, look at this. No. Angry run. <laughs> right? Drop your shoulder. We call that near foot, near shoulder. I'm going to tell you why. When you put that right foot and that right shoulder together and you run through someone, all that force that you're bringing through just blows them backwards. Here goes another angle at it. Check it out. Bang! Look at that. Sit him down. <laughs> Devin Singletary's not a big dude, but he's running like a big guy here. Again, ooh, sit down. Take a seat. Let me do the rest of this work. We're still hearing about that one. <laughs> no. He didn't win the set there, but people are mad. Yeah, here we go again. Right. Here we are, the Patriots of Week Sorry. 16. Two high safeties again. They're playing the pass. Six guys in the box, six to blockers. That's real simple. It's easy math. This is not, uh, you know, algebra or some other stuff that I failed. Calculus? <laughs> calculus, none of that. I didn't even take calculus. It was too tough. This is simple. Hat on hat on hat. Let's give our guy the ball. And look, here we go. We got, we're having the read option. Benoit takes the quarterback. Yep. Look at this simple crease. That's all you need. Put your foot in the ground, get north. Get a solid gain of eight, drive some guys. That, that's what you're looking for, right? Be efficient. You know, we were talking, uh, I think it was Peter who said, efficient runs with the, with the Eagles, not angry runs. Segment, well, here you go. This is the difference that you could do, and this is what I love about the Buffalo Bills and what I think the Philadelphia Eagles would do and the Buffalo Bills would do. It's five guys, five okay. blockers. We move a guy out. Look at this. All of a sudden, you really have the numbers advantage. You have a hat on a hat on a hat with an extra guy up there. And look at your quarterback setting up his blocks. Mm -hmm. That's right. Get him inside. Get going. High tower looked like he was on skates there. And that's what you're looking for. That's what they've done. Look, that's right. You get up and flex. This is what the Bills have done. They've kind of said, look, if you want to force us to run the ball, we will do that. We're okay with that because we're okay with getting the eight, the ten, the five yards and getting mm -hmm. into second and five or second and two or a first down, and then you allow those guys to come down, then you can open up your passing game again. It's being more patient, I think, and that's always the key. Peter, they're not going to get very far in the AFC if they're one-dimensional. They're clearly not, and that makes them even more of a threat. Yeah, the game's going to be bone-crushingly cold, zero degrees. This running game has to set up. Like, you have... The key is to wear down this Patriots defense. To do, I don't know if I've seen that from Devin Singletary and the boys. I haven't all season. It's been Josh Allen. Yes. I don't want to see Josh Allen in danger. Can this Devin Singletary have the best game of his career when they need it most? Well, I think I think more than anything, and, I, and you're right, because I remember waking up on Tuesday, it was like one degree outside here in New York, so I know it's going to be really cold there. But it's tough to tackle a running back when it's cold like that. Mm -hmm. It's tough, because he knows where he's going, and he's a smaller dude. And he's, he, he's a... He's a 
a, a stockier guy. So when he gets going, look, you see he starts shrugging those shoulders, he can play. Uh, he's going to give you some some juice, and you still have Zach Moss there. And then at the end of the day, when you get in that red zone, that's where Josh Allen's going to take his legs to the next level, and they've been utilizing that as well. This is the luxury of us going down from 32 teams to 12 or playing this weekend. We spend six minutes on Devin Singletary, and we should. This is a crucial, pivotal player in this whole thing mm -hmm. because I think the Bills can go to the title game with just Josh Allen being Josh Allen, but to a man in that team, every single person is like, we don't care. We don't care about the title game. We don't care about the division. We want to win a Super Bowl. Mm. Devin Singletary is a very pivotal player. The other thing that happened with him, first half of the season, he fumbled five times. Yeah. He was fumbling. Second half of the season, zero. He has transformed himself as a player, as a mental warrior, and he's the difference. Josh is going to be Josh. Diggs is going to be Diggs. The difference between the Bills in a title game and a Super Bowl or a champions are players like that. He has a really important role in the whole AFC, if you look at it that way. Devin Singletary is a key to that game, and this isn't the first time I've taken advice from a doctor wearing a graphic tee who's never taken calculus. Yeah. Unfortunately. What, what is it, why is a doctor? Why do you need calculus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find, find the slope of some. Remember slope? Sure. In Buffalo, if I said the Patriots can beat the Bills by running the ball and doing nothing else, would that be an overreaction? I think I think it's an overreaction. I think it was true that one night in the wind, but even then the game was close. The, this, there was one play, right, where they run for 64 yards and a touchdown. Otherwise, the Bills felt like they had them pretty well contained. Look, they ran for 222 that night. It's not a joke, but they only threw it three times. Right. And then when they met again three weeks later in more reasonable weather in Foxborough, Buffalo was clearly the better team and the more explosive offense. Yeah, the wind that night on that Monday night was really the bigger factor than the cold. Yes. There's going to be some wind tomorrow night, but mostly it's going going to be cold. Bundle up if you're going to be at Patriots Bills on Saturday night. The low temperature is going to be 2 degrees, wind gusting 13 miles an hour, so it's going to feel like it's below zero at kickoff. And, you know, we know that our man Ninko, who is, he, he likes, he's, he remains very close with the Patriot organization. My first question today was, are you going to the game tomorrow night? <laughs> I was going to go to the game. I was going to take my wife, but she said no. She said, why don't we just cheer on the Patriots and hope to go to Nashville that next weekend. So, Paige, I love Anyway, <laughs> we're not going to Buffalo. We were going to, but it's negative five degrees. I really yeah. don't feel like having ten layers on and freezing. So okay. I'll watch it from the comfort yeah, of my I home. Think, and and she, when you say you right. don't feel yes. like it, yeah. you mean your wife doesn't feel like it. I understand <laughs> completely. Yeah, 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 well, you know, Dan's we're gonna, so hey, don't make get sure mad at him. Yeah. I'm the, I goaded him into saying it. He, he, Sacha, he did it. I refuse. I'm consumed by these cold. By the way, I'm not going either. I wouldn't go to that game if my life depended on it. I'm obsessed with these cold weather <laughs> games, and I think fans are. I, I think fans just find it fascinating. I cannot, I cannot accept that the weather is not going to have some impact on this game. So, Sacha, what impact does it have? Who does it affect the most? Uh, I think, if anything, it will affect the mentality of the teams. But both teams play in cold weather. Yes, it will have an impact on the game, but it won't be the deciding factor. The deciding factor, Greeny, in this game will be Josh Allen and his explosiveness, right? We understand that the Patriots are going to run the ball. They're not going to put the ball in Mac Jones' hands. We saw a couple weeks ago a pick a pick in for Mac Jones, pick six. He, he hasn't been playing as well, whereas Josh Allen – the Bills offense, they are creative enough. If they need to run the ball, they can. But if you need a hero play, a huge play, a game-winning play, Josh Allen has the ability to make that play. And weather will not define that, nor will it deter that. Why? Because he's not just passing the ball. He's doing it with his legs as well. That play right there was a game-winning play. Fourth down, you need it most. And so that, for me, is the difference. Not the weather, the player. And that player will be Josh Allen. Now, let's talk about another player, RC, because we talked about it in our meeting this morning before we came on. Uh, it, it might have an impact on another critical player in this game. Well, I think the, the player that has an impact on me is, is Mac Jones. Right. And when you look at Josh McDaniels and his play calling, when you go back to that windy game on Monday night, you start to wonder, OK, what was the difference in the way that they saw Mac Jones as opposed to the Buffalo Bills seeing Josh Allen? And I do think it's an arm talent. Our colleague Rex Ryan talks about it every Monday when he said that Mac Jones isn't Tom Brady. He's always talking about a pea shooter and he says it as a joke. But if you look at Mac Jones's QBR as the weather turned cold in December, and when you take out the Jacksonville Jaguars game, he's near or at the bottom of the entire NFL. And so I think 
think what Josh McDaniel sees his ability or how he sees his ability to throw the football in this weather, to push the football down the field, to try to stretch the Buffalo Bills is extremely important because I believe the Buffalo Bills will allow Josh Allen to be Josh Allen, allow him to be explosive, You'll use him in the run game, push the football down the field when they came. Now, he hasn't been great in Buffalo against the New England Patriots. He's had his better games on the road. But when you look at who these teams are and who they can be when they're at their best, I don't know if the New England Patriots can be at their best offensively with Mac Jones in this type of inclement weather. You see those numbers there. He's 40th out of 41 quarterbacks over the last 15 years in freezing games. The only one behind him is Tim Tebow. So the cold weather, while he's a big guy from Wyoming, you, you would think he would enjoy that weather. Uh, it has not worked well for him in the past. We want to give you two things to watch, two, two things to keep a close eye on. Because when we were talking this morning, you said there's offense, there's defense, and what else plays a huge role in the well, cold? The first thing that is affected with wind and cold temperatures is the kicking game. So hmm. field goals. Uh, kickoff, punt, like, and that's field position. So if you look at the field position and where your starting possessions are at, if you have a poor punting performance and you're not able to turn the field over, well, then that's when the running game comes into effect mm -hmm. and, and ball control and all those things that the weather can affect. So the kicking game is number one. The, the, the attempts, if they're going to attempt field goals, I mean, you look at the first matchup that affected everything yep. that both teams were trying to do. So in this particular matchup, yes, the cold is going to affect both teams, but it's going to be the mentally tough team that can overcome those things. And Josh Allen has stated that there is a track record of us playing better in warmer games and not not playing well in cold games. So it's going to come down to who can be the more mentally tough football team. The other thing to watch, Dan Graziano, you were in Buffalo for their game last week, and you mm -hmm. gave us a very important note to keep an eye on. It was windy, and, and the wind was, was going one specific direction all game, and there were 37 points scored in that game, and 34 of them were scored in the direction with the wind behind it. So so, and when the Bills were going into the wind, Allen looked a lot worse. And so I think that's the key is how windy is it going to be? The cold is, I mean, they'll, they'll manage the cold. It's the same for both teams. But if it, if it ends up being, you know, super windy and the passing games are involved, then we've seen that game before, and that played into the Patriots. Yeah, hand. you see it up there. A wind gust up to 13 miles that's, an hour. That's, that's, that's not enormous, but it's not nothing. I would have liked that on Sunday. And I'll so, tell you that. <laughs> yeah, Graziano, he's lucky he didn't draw that game. All right, coming up, we got more games to get to in all right, fair enough. Now, you mentioned the weather, that crazy Monday night game with all of that wind. Well, we're not going to have the wind for this game quite as much, although you see there is some wind, but it is going to be freezing. Two degrees above zero, it's going to feel like below zero. It's one of those classic NFL weather games, which I think fans love, and generally speaking, I think players hate. Um, Dominic, just give us a quick thought before we get, I, I'm always fascinated by that, before we get into how it impacts this particular game, give us a quick thought on playing in sub-zero temperatures. Yeah. I mean, everything hurts, and it's an extra opponent. Like, it's an extra opponent for everyone. The weather is something that you have to contend with. The people who handle it better, obviously, they're, gonna, they're going to uh, serve themselves well in that game. But it's not something that you can just not think about because everything you do becomes more difficult and more painful, whether you're a quarterback, running back, or offensive or defensive lineman. Everybody has a job to do. And you have to beat the guy across from you, and you also have to beat Mother Nature. So it's a, it's a tough thing to, to deal with. I asked Chris Collinsworth about it. He played in the coldest game, negative 59 in 1982 on my radio show. And he said the first time he got hit, he felt like someone had thrown a rock into a mirror. And it just shattered into a million pieces. And he was that mirror. And so we'll see how it affects it. All of us sitting on our couches nice and warm will enjoy watching it. That said, Tim Hasselbeck. How does this particular game become impacted by the weather? The cold, Mac Jones versus Allen. Belichick has all the experience in the world in cold weather games. Who gets the edge based on the conditions? Well, let me say this. The awful weather conditions, no doubt, would favor the New England Patriots. We saw it in their first matchup. But, Greeny, you just had the, the forecast up there. Yeah, it's going to be cold. But that's fine. You know, like, so to me, I don't think weather ends up being a factor in, in this game if that forecast holds true. Look, that, that to me ends up being a win right there for Buffalo that it's just going to be freezing cold and that there's only going to be gusts of 14-mile-per-hour winds. Like, that, that's not going to affect the passing game. What would affect the passing game is what we saw in the first matchup. The second matchup, when it was cold, not as cold as it's going to be this weekend, Look what Josh Allen did. He threw it 47 times 
ran it another 12 times. They put the whole thing on him. And so I think if, if that ends up being the case, this Buffalo team, you know, ends up having the advantage with just cold weather. How about it, Dominique? Because uh, I mean, we saw Mac Jones only throw three balls that first game in Orchard Park this year. Is this going to be another offensive game like that for New England? I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be allowed to because they're not going to be able to stop Josh Allen. At some point, they're going to have to take the reins off of Mac Jones. And Mac said himself that he is, has not traditionally got a lot of experience in cold weather and he's not all that comfortable with it just yet. So he's going to have to contend with those safeties who they're outstanding and also contend with this weather and probably going to have to come back at some point in this game. I expect um, the Bills to have a little trouble, but they're going to have the lead at some point in this game. And if the Pats are going to win, Mac Jones is going to have to lead some drives when everyone knows he has to throw, which I'm not sure he can do in a playoff setting just yet. It is Bill versus the Bills tomorrow. Are you ready or not? It's Patriots at home in division. That's something that you dream about. It's going to be a great challenge. The Bills are back on top in the AFC East. Are you ready or not? You know they're a good team and we got a lot to get ready for. They know us, we know them. It's going to be a 12 round slug fest. We gonna sit at the top. to be cold for that game a high of 12 tomorrow with winds at 13 miles per hour these two teams know a thing or two about harsh conditions but who will outperform in them to advance the bills and patriots split their regular season meetings and now it's time for round numero tres okay dominique is still here and so is ryan clark and also a guy who knows a thing or two about winning with the patriots i would say right yeah, we'll rob go. ninkovich so uh, Rob, let's start with you. Who do you think is going to win this game? Is it the Patriots or the Bills? I'm going with the Patriots, and, and I know R.C. and Dominique are going to say, oh, Rob's going to go with the Patriots because he's a Patriot. <laughs> well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good reason. It's a I good mean, reason. Yeah, it's, it's loyalty. Reason. We like but, loyal but, people but around here. But another reason why I'm going with that is because the Patriots beat the Bills in Buffalo when the weather was poor and it was windy and it was a little chilly and now there's you know you got Josh Allen going on record saying yeah we don't know the reason why we're not that great in cold weather and my feet go numb like there's just <laughs> yeah I have circulation issues it's, yeah like <laughs> it, 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 let's not ask Bart Scott about you know how to fix those issues so but or should I would say, we yeah, exactly but, so this is my thing when the 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 game is going to be freezing cold. We know that, right? It's a mentally tough thing. It's a it's a running game game. It's going to be who's the tougher team when it comes to just handing the football off. And we've seen this before. The Patriots didn't even have to throw a pass in the last matchup when it was windy in Buffalo. So it's the playoffs. What does Bill do in the playoffs? He game plans. He does the best game planning in the history of coaching that we have seen throughout the coaching in general. He's the best at ever doing it. So – the Patriots are going to have a great game plan for the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. And it's going to be cold, so put your jacket on, get by the little heaters. And I don't want to see, I don't want to see guys huddled around the heaters and doing this with their hands. It's a football game. Go out there. It's cold. Okay, go make plays. Go fly around. Keep yourself warm. Go run around. That, so the Patriots win. Okay. Nico. Nico, yes. Nico, everybody hates playing in the cold, right? I like even, I, I played for Pittsburgh and, and I never even played. I never played anywhere warm and it was never a day where I woke up. and was like, I am so glad that these are these freezing temperatures that we get to play in. So it don't matter if you play for Buffalo, if you play for New England, all of those people hate cold. We're talking about Josh Allen having no circulation in his toes. Well, Mac Jones is going to wear a scuba <laughs> suit. Like that's what the, the New England Patriots <laughs> quarterbacks do he's gonna be in a school he's gonna be scuba Steve and so when we think about this game you can't think back to that Monday night game where the New England Patriots were able to win with only throwing three passes that was also a wintry hell the the way the winds were blowing they were sideline to sideline Josh Allen he also couldn't throw foot throw the football as accurately as he normally does in that type of weather but the the New England Patriots didn't even try and also look at the New England Patriots throughout the last month of the season you lose to the Indian 
Indianapolis Colts. You lose to the Buffalo Bills. You lose to the Miami Dolphins. Mac Jones is in the bottom of the of the league in QBR since it's become the winter. The, the New England Patriots have changed as the team. The New England Patriots aren't playing the dominant defense that we saw them play early on in the season. They aren't dominating teams physically up front the way they did throughout the early part of the season or throughout their six-game run where they were undefeated. And so there's so many things that are different about both of these teams, but none more different than this. Josh Allen is a superstar. We all know that. Since the second half of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game, he's played that way. He's used his legs. He's used his arms. And Brian Dayball, the offensive coordinator, has also called plays and schemed in that fashion to make him the focal point of what they do, but also allowing Singletary to run, allowing Zach Moss to run. This is the better football team. This is the football team whose time it is, at least right now, in the AFC East. And I don't care what the weather is, Scuba Steve, Bill Belichick, Mac Jones, whoever you walk Scuba out there, Steve. the Buffalo Bills are going to take the win. Yeah, the Bills are going to pull this one out in part because the biggest strength that you would think you have is that Bill Belichick mind against Josh Allen because they're going to have to create turnovers. They're going to have to create a short field in order to win yeah. this game. They're, they're, they're going to have though. to give Mac Jones. Their, yeah, you would think so, but they haven't been against yeah. Mac Jones. Mac Jones got eight touchdowns and one interception in their past four um, times playing against each other. You said the, the one the, the time... Bill, Mac Jones or Josh Allen? Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen got eight touchdowns and one interception in the last four times that they played each other. So they haven't been able to create those turnovers. And the one time that the Pats were able to beat the Bills was in that windstorm, which was not a modern football game. Like, that is going to happen once <laughs> every five years. It's not going to happen again. That was 1950s football. Bill Belichick is going to win a lot of 1950s <laughs> football games. And no matter how cold it is, we're not going to have one of those this weekend. And the Bills, frankly, because that game was in prime time that night or that, that win game, a lot of us started to think and talk about it like, man, Bill Belichick sure does own these guys. Actually, in recent history, yeah. the Bills have owned the Patriots, and I don't see this changing, especially since if your big advantage is that it's cold outside and your quarterback is from down south and he don't like the cold either. Like, it don't seem like he is Tom <laughs> right. Brady. He's not looking yeah. for the tough game. He's not looking for the snow game. Tom is gone. <laughs> your quarterback is a sun boy, and he don't like it neither. How about this? We st <laughs> let's let's stop living in the past and talking about the cold speed. Let's stop talking about the past. Let's, let's talk about the future. This is the playoffs. We're I, I like to game. live in the past in that regard. I don't like living in the past. This is the NFL. Not for long if you don't play well. So I think the Patriots <laughs> are going to play better. And guess what? This is another thing that it's hidden. Nobody talks about it. In cold games, the number one thing affected is the kicking game. The better punter is with yeah. the Patriots. The field position battle. All those My things God. come into Can effect. We go to the so, next topic. if the you Patriots have topics. better field position we this one. than Buffalo, We're done with this and one. they have the better when you start, kicker, go. When you Buffalo, start, when I'm you not start, hearing it. I'm not hearing it. When you start grabbing, you start grabbing for the punter as your advantage. <laughs> hey, that's good. <laughs> no, you are desperate. That's, that's you are desperate. desperate. Listen, it is three. Like, Phase well, game, three better. phases. There's a three-phase game. Also, I think, Dominique, I feel like you're underestimating the weather here. I mean, it is, it's is—it's not just going to be cold. It's going to be freezing, okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and, yes. and Josh Allen, historically speaking, has thrown more interceptions than touchdowns when the kickoff weather is below freezing, which it certainly will be. So, that's probably, Bill Belichick, that's probably you know true he's going to game plan for this. We don't know. Well, it could, know, it could okay, come down to the kickoff. Well, well, go ahead, RC, my bad. No, I, I, I think the one thing we have to remember about Josh Allen when we talk about his QBR in cold games or you talk about interception to touchdown ratio, it's also because in the game like we saw in primetime where Mac Jones only threw the ball three times, Josh Allen threw it 20 times. It's because the team that he plays for okay. understands that those type of weather conditions don't necessarily negate that you should try to throw the football. And so in a lot of these situations, he's throwing the football in, in weather or in some times where other teams won't even try to do it. Yeah, well, one of the keys to winning sometimes is avoiding errors, so maybe he should try to throw less if he knows that a lot of them are going to be intercepted, <laughs> potentially. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. Ryan, you're sticking with us the rest of the way, so let's keep it rolling, yeah. gentlemen. Okay, Saturday night, two degrees in Orchard Park, New York, oh. for round three. 40 days apart for three games between the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills. The Patriots, the sixth seed. The Bills, the three seed. The Bills, obviously, the AFC's champions. 
go ahead and start us off. Let's look at first. Bills have the ball. What do the Patriots do? Yeah, the Bill. I mean, the the Patriots definitely have to adjust their approach a little bit as far as what happened the first time around. Uh, I you you heard me say a little today. You know, there was too many plays of where they let Josh Allen out of the pocket and he made magic happen. That's got to be at the forefront of what the Patriots want to do here. And the fact that, wait, you know, when we kept him in the pocket and did that, the results were, let's say, 50-50. When he got outside the pocket, the results were 90-10 in Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills' favor. That's the first thing I look at to where they got to change it a little bit. You know, And then the second thing within that, they had problems, the, the Patriots, the first time around, stopping crossing routes from the B Buffalo Bills. They, they, they had issues with that in man-to-man. -man. And a lot of times where like the Patriots have guys usually to help out, hey, it's a man-to-man -man from a corner, right? And the guy runs that shallow cross or that crossing route. He knows where he's going. The corners not only got to follow him, but usually fight through traffic to keep up with him. Do, you know, avoid linebackers, avoid this guy, avoid that guy, try to get there to do that. And usually there's really no corners on earth that can, like, that, that, that can overcome that. Usually the Patriots have some guy there to help out in those situations. I think because of Josh Allen's running ability and they dabbled in some other defenses the first time around where they didn't have that. So they got to find a way, in my opinion, to change the plan a little bit. And my biggest thing would be need to play a little bit more man-to-man. -man. And what really worked for them is when they played man-to-man, -man, Mike, and did the things that we've talked about a lot with successful defenses. Man-to-man -man, looks like they're going to blitz, ends up only really being a four-man rush. Two guys drop out. They're looking for crossers or anything like that coming their way. That helps out the corner who's chasing and all that. When they did stuff like that, they won the plays. They did that. And to me, that's what I think they got to change a little bit more here. It's not a scary receiving group with Buffalo. There's only one guy to be scared about. That's Diggs. They should be able to trust J.C. Jackson on him to a degree. And then the other guys match up, play some of the system things that I talk about. You know, But the Patriots played a few too many zones, in my opinion, the first time around. Zones with a three-man rush where – you know, he was patient enough to dance back there, Josh Allen, and go, okay, it's three men. I'm going to wait. And they're playing zone, and I'll look a little over here and get everybody over there, and then zoom. I'll hit it to where they moved away from and get that. And he just he's too good to play that kind of defense. So that's where uh, I'll be interested to see, the, to see where this goes. Significant stat as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Josh Allen, in four – of the last five games, starting with the game after the Monday night loss to the Patriots at home. In four of the last five games, he has had more rushing yards than in any of the games before these last five games. Yeah. 109 against Tampa Bay, 64 in the rematch with the Patriots, 81 against Atlanta, 63 against the Jets. Before that, his high all season long was 59 Yeah, in any one game. So they started letting him run earlier to try to supplement the passing game and also to make up for some of the deficiencies in the passing game. We saw three interceptions against the Falcons in the game where he had those 81 rushing yards and two touchdowns. I think they better be ready to deal with Josh Allen as a runner. And when he runs it, yeah. They, they, they better be ready to treat him like a running back. No doubt. And, and again, you know, th this is a slippery slope. People get triggered and up in arms when you talk about hitting a quarterback like a running back. But if he's going to take advantage of being a running back, the Patriots are going to be playing tough defense. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Agreed. Bill Belichick's going to be ready for it. Whether or not they can actually stop it remains to be seen. All right, the Patriots offense, we saw not much from Mac Jones the night it was windy in Buffalo. We saw more from Mac Jones, and it wasn't very good when the Bills came to town. We talked about this earlier on PFT Live, but do we trust a Mac Jones offense as a rookie in his playoff debut against the Buffalo Bills? I, I do, but it, it, as long as it's not, you know, too much is expected of him. You know, you know again, it, if it gets to the kind of game where you go, wait, the Bills are moving the ball, Josh Allen's making plays, and the Patriots got to score points to keep up, I don't like that for the, the Patriots. If it comes to a point where we go, where, wow, Mac Jones is, he's going to have to, you know, complete somewhere around 30 passes today and they need to throw for 350 yards. I, I don't feel comfortable with saying the Patriots are going to win with that type of formula. 
You know, it's it, it's it's gonna still have to be through the run game. To me, that's still their greatest advantage as a football team. And we know that's where you can take advantage of the Bills a little bit. You know, the Bills were better in that second matchup. You know, they certainly were keyed into some of the things that burned them the first time around. But you know the Patriots are gonna have a few things off of that now to make the Bills have to second guess some of that approach. You know that. You know, but but I, that to me is is really the, still the key to the game. Can the Bills slow down the Patriots' run game? And, like, slow it down to where yeah, Damian Harris can run for 100. They just can't go off for 250 as a total team. That, that can't happen. That means they're controlling the clock, Josh Allen's on the sidelines, and things aren't going in their direction. You know, if they can just manage the run game a little bit, I think you see results like you saw the second game where, yeah, you know, the Bills' pass rush won the war in the, in the first matchup. matchup. The Bills' secondary can cover these Patriot receivers who are not that explosive man-to-man and give them issues, let alone with some cool ideas from McDermott. So uh, to answer your question, I would say no. They can't expect him to carry the squad and just go off in this game. Yeah, and they are going to have to run the ball and control the clock and keep Josh Allen on the sidelines to take some steam out of the offense that way. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and make my pick. Okay. I'm making my pick. Okay, cool. I'm doing it. Um, this is pasta and meatballs light because I don't think this is a major stretch to right. come to the conclusion right. that Bill Belichick finds a way, whatever it takes, comes up with a game plan, coaches his guys up to execute it, that the Patriots, given their vast experience as a coaching staff dealing with single elimination settings and also just that, that, that tightness, you know, when you're the favorite, when you're the home team. When you're the one that's supposed to advance and it's your nemesis that you, you know, it's like trying to beat your big brother in ping pong. Even though they won at Foxborough earlier this year, this is playoff football. This is facing your big brother in ping pong with a trophy on the line or the pursuit of a trophy on the line. I, I think the the Patriots win this one. And, uh, you know, it, it reminds me a little bit of Giants Bills. From Super Bowl 25, where you neutralize the keg on offense by yeah. keeping it on the sideline. I hear you. Um, and may maybe you dare them to run the ball, even though they have been running it better. 20 to 19. Why not? Oh, Bills I like it. Lose to the Patriots by one point. Maybe, maybe wide right on a field goal yeah. to end the game. Yeah. Maybe that's how it goes down. Maybe a safety on Josh Allen from Bruce Smith or something like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, I, hey, listen, this is scary too. I, I'm, I'm with you. This game could go either way. There's no doubt. I will say this. The Patriots in the second game were too predictable. They lost on first and second down too much. They were one for 10 on third downs. And because of the predictability, that was the issue. Mike, like it, it, too many like, hey, we're in a running formation on first down and we're going to run the ball. And then, of course, they ran the ball and got no yards. There was too much of that. They got to zig when they zag a little bit. I'm going with the Bills here. I think the Bills are a little bit more of the desperate, chippy team right now. They expected to be on the king of the hill here for a little longer. They're not ready to relinquish it yet. I'm not trusting a rookie on the road in the playoff game. Bills, 28-20, taking the victory. All right, and the cover. Uh, and, you know, I just remembered I picked the Bills to win the Super Bowl to start the season, and usually my approach is as long as my Super Bowl winner is still alive, I don't pick against them. Oh, well, that was four months ago. This is a start. Oh, great stuff right there by that man that gave that motivational speech just minutes after the Bills made the playoffs for the first time in 18 years. He spent all 13 seasons with the Bills. He was a six-time Pro Bowler. Let's welcome in that man with his young sons at his side. Defensive tackle, Kyle Williams. Good morning. Kyle, good morning. Good morning, guys. How we doing? We're fantastic, and uh, we're so uh, thrilled that you're joining us right now from wherever you might happen to be. Um, listen, you, 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 you retired secret. a couple of years ago, and while I want to ask you how retirement has been going, it sounds like you have actually been pretty busy. You got right into coaching, and you started coaching high school football. Tell us, where, you, where were you coaching, and how did it go? Well, I'm, uh, I'm coaching at my local high school, uh, helping out there. And I've been doing it for uh, two years. This will be going into my third year there. Uh, my first year out after I retired, I did some stuff uh, for Sean and Brandon in, in Buffalo and traveled back and forth there and, and, and kind of got into high school coaching and, and, and really enjoy uh, helping and being with the kids of the community. Uh, it gives me some freedom to still do some 
uh, old football related stuff, you know, get to come on with you guys and I'll pop up to Buffalo, do some different stuff. So uh, I stay pretty busy. I stay pretty busy. So retirement is a very loose term. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, no doubt about it. And it uh, looks like you're in God's country right now. Listen, we'll get to the Patriots Bills game very shortly. But first, I just want to go back to that moment. We showed that video of you in the locker room to with your with your sons uh, celebrating that victory four years ago. And you guys beat the <clears> Dolphins <throat> that day, but you needed some help. You needed the Bengals to, to win a game to secure that playoff berth. And look, you've had a lot of great personal accolades, right? You, you've, you know, the Pro Bowls, you scored a touchdown, a big man TD. But that was your first time playing in the postseason, your first time in the playoffs. Take us back to that moment in the locker room when you realized you guys were in the postseason. Well, I'll try to sum up something very quickly for you. Um, I, I was obviously at the tail end of my career, and reporters say, oh, it's over. Um, I forget, it was like the Ravens had done this, and it ended up being a penalty. So I only heard mm. that it was over. So I'm walking in the locker room with my boys and going to see everybody. I'm like, okay, well, we're not going to go to the playoffs. So here's an opportunity to be like a great teammate, what I talk about, and like let my boys see like how do you handle disappointment. <laughs> and it, and we walk, in, we walk in there, and I'm like, what, why are they still playing? Well, I mean, what are they doing with the ball? And they said, oh, it was a penalty, and they, they ran it back. And then you get to see what you see in the locker room. Uh, that everybody's seen uh, that you guys just showed. So it was an it was an amazing time. I mean, we had guys in that room that had won Super Bowls, that had won national championships, had done a lot of different things. And the next year in the spring, we polled everybody like, hey, give us your favorite football moment. And the guys... For life. It was a beautiful moment. I actually can't believe, Kyle, that it was four years ago that that happened. And then you just uh -huh. decide to stay another year, which ended up being your final year in the National Football League, where you were teammates with then-rookie quarterback Josh Allen. Now, you say in that clip, this is just the start. Can you tell me how you would describe his evolution from rookie to what he is out there today? Well, I think when he was a rookie, you saw all the intangible things. I mean, he, he's like an oak tree. He's 6'6", six, six, he's 240, and you see that he can run and he can make all these incredible throws. The one thing, having spent time with Josh, that I had an opportunity to see that not everybody got a chance to see is how guys gravitated to him. You know, they just kind of found their way to Josh. So you saw that he had this intangible leadership quality to him. So he said, okay, you can see the perfect storm coming. You know, all the talent he has, guys gravitate to him. And then if he continues to develop and work as a player, you knew that there were special things to come. I was just too dang old to hang in there with him. <laughs> and those special things really have transpired now. When we're watching it, that leads us to this weekend. Kyle, you've been a part of a lot of Bill's Patriots games. But no one's really ever been a part of what happened week 13 of this year. The Patriots passed the ball three times. They ran 46 times. They won the game. After the game, the Bills' safeties were asked if they were embarrassed. It's a very memorable game. And yet, Belichick Saturday night could look for a sequel. He could come out trying to get that same running attempt going. What would you say, Kyle, if you were in the Bills' defensive meeting rooms before that game? What would be your game plan, and what would be your hype speech about taking on this, this Patriots running game again in Buffalo? Well, I can just tell you, knowing... Um what's going on you know it's a home game playoff game in buffalo at night uh it's against the patriots you know there's re there's really there's really not too much to be said as far as getting guys ready to go and, and and getting them going in the right direction i think it comes down to knowing your job and doing your job um there's no one player or two players that are going to be able to stop that running game everybody has to be accountable for what uh, they have to do. And then at the end of the day, tackle well. You know, there's no beautiful, elaborate scheme you can put together to stop power football. You know, you just have to match it. Uh, you have to set your jaw and you have to go out there and get after it. And I think that they'll be ready to go. I mean, obviously, I mean, it'll be a it'll be a powder keg of energy and emotion in that stadium tonight from the players to the fans, everybody. Uh, um, I mean, tomorrow night, I'm sorry. And uh, like we talked about earlier, it'll be a, it'll be great fun to watch, I can tell you. Great fun, unless it doesn't go as planned, right. and then it could be great why, disaster. Why, why, I hear birds. I don't. I, 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 I don't hear birds that, chirping behind direction. you. Yeah, you're trying Kyle, to bring I hear me birds down. Chirping like, behind you. You're so lovely. You're so. 
<laughs> We're on the East Coast. We live in a different world than the beautiful uh, scenic sounds you have behind you. Take us through that, the looming so, presence. I mean, over the course of your career and now after what happened the first time in Buffalo, is that an intimidation at all? The Patriots logo, Belichick in the hood, or are we over that? And is this a new era for the Bills? And have we started anew, just like you said in that locker room four years ago? Well, I think for me, like I'm sitting here right now and I'm, I've got a division crown on this shoulder and I've got birds chirping on this shoulder. So I have a very positive outlook on it. And I don't appreciate you trying to bring me down. Um, no, I, I, think that, I, I think that what you're going to see from these two football teams um, tomorrow night is what we're going to see from years to come because Mac Jones is only going to get better. Uh, he, he's going to be coached mm -hmm. hard. He's going to he's going to progress. He's going to get better. Obviously, you know, uh, Coach Belichick is going to put together a uh, defense that's going to limit points. It doesn't matter how many yards you get, what you're able to do. He is going to squeeze the red zone and limit points. So I think what we've seen these last two games in the regular season and what we'll see tomorrow night, I think, is a treat of what we have to come down the line. I mean, you have two young quarterbacks that are going to be really, really good. They play for great coaches in great football towns. Um, so it should be something like a pr prelude to what we're going to see down the line. Kyle, we, we can't thank you enough for, for joining us this morning. Looking forward to, uh, to the game. We're all going to set our jaw and focus on the tackling. I know it's going to be a cold game. I know you would never wear sleeves, so we're not even going to ask you about how mm -hmm. you'd handle the cold weather. But thanks so much for taking the time to, uh, to chat with us. And uh, we're, we're all looking forward to, to the game and, and, and to hearing you after the Bills game. All right, guys. Really glad to be with you. Good to see everybody. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Thank you, you so much, Kyle. Okay, Kyle. Enjoy that beautiful morning wherever. Okay.